assistants at the University of Central Florida for commercial real estate. And this exercise, I'm going to uh, assist in answering questions regarding capitalization rate and NOI. This problem has two parts. Part one asks us to calculate the overall capitalization rate given the following information, sales price, potential gross income, vacancy and loss, and operating expense. Question two in part one asks us to calculate the net operating income, assuming below line capitalization uh, treatment of CapEx. Very, very important. But this question has given us five pieces of information, the number of units for the property, the current rent amount per month for each unit, the vacancy and loss, the operating expense, and the CapEx 22%. I'm going to jump right into Excel, assuming that you've added this information into Excel already, the information that's been the input that's been given to us. For question number one, we were given four pieces of information. They're right here. In question number two, we were given five pieces of information. It's right there. To begin for question number one, we simply need to calculate the vacancy and loss because we were given the PGI. Vacancy and loss is a percentage of PGI, and they gave us a percentage of 7.5%. EGI is simply the sum of EGI and vacancy and loss. We get $339,591. We were already given the OPEX. So the NOI is simply the sum of EGI and OPEX, and you get $278,338. Cap rate, remember the formula for cap rate. It is I over RV, NOI over RV. To calculate that, we have uh, the NOI divided by the sales price, which would give us the cap rate for question number one, which is 5.43%. For question number two, we were given the number of units, the rent rate, the vacancy and loss, CapEx, we're asked to calculate these numbers, but to ultimately get to the NOI. The PGI is simply the number of units times the rental rate times 12, because we need to calculate PGI for the year. The vacancy and loss, as we did in the first exercise, is simply the percent of PGI, and the percent is 3%. So the vacancy and loss is $13,824. As we stated earlier, EGI is simply the sum of PGI and vacancy and loss. We get $446,976. OPEX was given to us, it was $92,400. And therefore, NOI is simply the sum of EGI and OPEX, which gives us $354, uh, $572. $354,576, I'm sorry. The CapEx is simply a percentage, a negative percent of EGI. EGI is $446,000 times the CapEx, 22%. So this answers the, uh, all the questions for the first part of the problem, the CapEx and the NOI. We're gonna jump right into the second part of the problem which is a bit more complicated, but I'll go through it pretty simply. We're going to look at uh, cash flow. We're going to do the rent roll. It might look overwhelming, but we'll um, section it off so you can make sense. Before you start your work, you seriously want to put in all of the inputs that were given to you. I recommend you create a box for your rent roll, and all of this information was given to us to create a box for our loan information and the items in gray were given to us. To create a box for our purchase information, we have to figure out the missing information because everything else uh, was given to us here. The purchase information was given to us and the disposition information was also given to us. But if you build your spreadsheet this way, you can pretty much get the answers you're looking for. We're gonna start with the rent roll. The rent roll is simply each unit monthly rent times 12. And if you do that, you can drag it down to get to the very uh, eighth unit. 
and simply the sum of the sum of the monthly rent gives us the total for the monthly rent. And if we drag it across, we'll get the total PGI for the entire property for the year. We're going to move over to the loan information. To calculate the loan information, the first thing we're going to start with is the, it's a 60% LTV. 60% of what? 60% of the purchase price which is 4235000 That was given to us. We need that information to calculate the monthly payment, this information here. The monthly payment is calculated using the payment function. The rate of this loan is 4.5%. We're going to divide that by 12. We're going, it's asking us for the number of periods. We're going to multiply by 12, and we're going to add the present value, which is the amount that we're borrowing 60% of the purchase price and we're looking for the future value is zero because at the end we will not have any payment the monthly payment is thirteen thousand six hundred and twenty four dollars and to calculate the annual payment we simply multiply the monthly payments times 12. now that we have that information we can actually begin some of the information up here we were given the purchase price that's that's given to us. We're looking for the loan cost. The loan cost is simply the amount that we're borrowing times the lender point or, or cost, which gives us $29,222. The debt, we already know the debt. The debt is the 60% of the purchase price. So therefore, the initial investment for this um uh, property is going to be simply the equal the purchase price plus the cost of the loan minus the debt gives us how much money we need to invest into this prop uh, property if we're borrowing uh, for levering this deal so we're going to move down to go ahead and calculate our um, cash flows we were given the year one NOI at $259,715, but we were also told that the NOI is growing at a rate of 2.25%. To calculate that, we need to simply go start in year two, equal year one times one plus the growth rate. What we're gonna do here is we're going to uh, anchor the growth rate because that is not going to change. We're going to drag it out until year six. Year six should end at $290,278. We just calculated the NOI for six years. The reason why we need six years, because when we sell this property at year five, we need to project or share with the potential buyer what the NOI might be for year six. So they can calculate the cap rate. At any rate, the debt is simply the annual debt, which we've already calculated. We're, we're going to go ahead and anchor that as well because the debt is not going to change uh, over time. We're going to stop at year five because um, we don't know what the buyer will do after we sell the property, if they're going to have, have debt or purchase it unlevered. Now, the before tax cash flow is simply the sum of NOI and the debt service. So the NOI, uh, the before tax cash flow is $96,231. If we drag it across, we'll have the before tax cash flow for every year from year one through year five. Now, the levered before tax cash flow uh, we're going to calculate that in a, minute, in a minute, but I want to highlight and point out what these are. At year zero, we're borrowing. We're borrowing our initial investment, rather. I'm not borrowing. We're, our initial investment, rather, and in the, in the this project is we calculated that earlier. So we put that here. It's a negative number. The unlevered before tax cash flow. And for year zero, this is how much we would invest in the property if we didn't get a loan. It's simply the purchase price. So that's what those are. 
to calculate the levered before tax cash flow, the levered before tax cash flow is simply the before tax cash flow. And we're going to drag it across until year five. And we're going to do the unlevered before tax cash flow is simply the NOI because there's no loan involved. And we're going to drag it across. We're going to stop at year five. I'm going to highlight year five because we're going to treat this a little differently because we're going to have to add additional information to year five when we're dispositioning the property. In order to calculate that, what we need to do, or before we continue, let's go ahead and calculate the going in cap rate. We remember the cap rate formula, I over RV or NOI over RV. The, to calculate that, now that we have the year one NOI divided by the price of the property, that gives us the going in cap rate. So this is one of the first questions we've answered is the going in cap rate that the problem is asking for. And to calculate the sales proceeds before tax, we're going to uh, treat, we're going to calculate the sales price um, uh, of this property after year five. And to do so, we were given, we figured out rather the NOI for year six, we're gonna use year six NOI divided by we were given the exit cap rate 6.15. Therefore, the sales price for this property after five years would be $4,719,962. The selling cost is simply 3%. The selling cost was given to us 3% of the sales price. We're going to make that a negative number since it is an it is a uh, an expense to us when we sell the property. And the debt retirement. This is the cum print formula. In order to calculate that, we're going to say the initial um, loan amount is going to be two million five hundred forty one thousand dollars. We're going to do negative minus cum print. And we're going to start with the rate that was for the loan, which was uh, 4.15 divided by 12, comma. It's asking us for the number of periods, also 25 times 12. It's asking us for the present value, which is again the amount that we borrowed. And then we're going to ask. It's asking us for the start period one. We're going to end. We're going to hold the property for five years, five year hold times 12 because there's 12 months in the year. And if we do that, we should get, sorry about that. We should get the debt retirement. The debt retirement is, this is the cum print formula. I'll pause here for a second so you can take note of it. It is the initial debt minus cum print the rate divided by 12, the amortization period times 12, and you add the um, debt amount again, comma, the first period, the start period, and the end period happens to be five times 12. And that gives us the net value. Uh, to calculate the net value, we would just simply sum the sales price, the selling costs, and the debt. The net value is $2,359,210. We're going to need this information to calculate the before tax cash flow lever, the lever before tax cash flow, because we're going to add that, the net value, to year five NOI. And that gives us the two million four hundred seventy nine dollars thousand dollars six hundred seventy six hundred and six six hundred and six hundred sixteen i'm so sorry and the uh unlevered before tax cash flow we're going to be adding to it the sales price minus the selling costs which will give us Four million eight hundred and seventy-two thousand two hundred fifty-three dollars. With that information, we should be able to calculate now the 
before tax NPV, levered and unlevered, before tax IRR, levered and unlevered, cash on cash, levered and unlevered. So the uh, IRR, the NPV formula is quite simple. It's equal NPV, and we're looking for the levered. Levered NPV is going to be this row, close parentheses, and we're going to add the initial investment, levered. That gives us the, oh, we forgot to put the rate, the discount rate, I apologize. The discount rate was 12%. Sorry about that. There you go. So the, to recap, the NPV, parentheses, the discount rate, comma, the entire cash flow from year one to year five, and then you add year zero or the initial investment, which gives us the NPV levered. The NPV unlevered, let's see if I can not make the mistake of forgetting to put the um, discount rate. The discount rate of 12%, the entire row for, uh, of cash flow year one through year five, close parentheses, and you're going to add the initial investment at year zero, and the unlevered is negative $662,717. The IRR is even easier. It's equal IRR. And that would be for levered the entire row, including the um, initial investment year zero uh, um, contribution. The then we get twelve point oh one percent. The unlevered IRR same formula. We're going to do the value of year zero initial investment and year one through year five. We get seven point seven eight percent the cash on cash is basically the year one noi year one noi divided by this is levered year one noi divided by um the initial investment and the unlevered is the year one noi divided by the purchase price. So that is the uh, answers all the questions that were asked of us for this problem. And to recap, all I did here is um, we um, we found all these answers throughout, and we we put them here in one location. We were we were able to compute the going in cap rate, which is up here. We we're able to compute the year one PGI here. We we're able to compute. Well, we didn't compute the this uh, debt service coverage ratio. Let's do that real quickly. The debt service coverage ratio is quite simple. It is simply the um, NOI divided by the debt amount, which happens to be 163,484. Uh, the debt coverage ratio is 1.15. And now we calculated that. And we we're able to calculate the initial investment, which is here. We're able to calculate the um, the selling price of the property, which is here. We're able to calculate the debt retirement of the property um, here after five years. We're able to calculate the NPV um, um, before tax NPV. We're able to calculate the uh, IRR levered. We're able to calculate the um, discounted cash flow of the project. And we're able to calculate the net value of this project as well. But while we're at that, we're able to calculate the cash on cash as well as the unlevered NPV before tax IRR and unlevered cash on cash. Hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, please email me uh, through web courses and good luck.